Hello everyone, this is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today we will talk about bistable load switching modules. These modules can remain indefinitely in two modes of your choice, either on or off. The module works very simply. The first press of the button turns it on, and the second time it turns it off. These modules can be called electronic latching buttons. With their help, you can turn on and off any device by pressing just one button. I bought the modules on AliExpress, there are two types. I will now tell you what their differences are. Both modules are almost the same. Power is supplied on the left and load is connected on the right. Here I depicted a light bulb and a motor. But in fact, you can connect absolutely any load. Whatever comes to your mind. The first low voltage module operates from 3.5 volts to 5.4 volts. The second module is higher voltage. Its supply voltage range is much larger, from 4.5 to 26. When disabled, in standby mode, the first module consumes very little current, only 300 nanoamps. The second is four times larger than 1.3 microamps. The declared load current for these modules is quite impressive, up to 10 amps. I will show whether this is true or not in tests. There are few parts on the low voltage module. A button, capacitors, a 75 ampere field effect transistor and just below a small six-legged microcircuit. It is she who controls the entire module. The scheme is quite simple. When the button is pressed, the output of the microcircuit opens and current flows to the gate of the transistor. The transistor opens and through it the load is powered from the power source. There are more parts on the high voltage module. Here is the same control chip and transistor. In addition, there is a 12-volt Zener diode, a 3.6-volt voltage regulator, a dual-signal inverter and a bipolar transistor. There is nothing on the back side of the boards other than the tracks. The minus in both cases goes directly through the entire board. Switching in the circuit occurs on the positive side. The module sizes are very small. The photo shows a comparison with a matchbox. Thanks to such compact sizes, they can be integrated into almost any device. If the small button located on the board is inconvenient to use, then you can remove the wires from it and connect your own button. The button must be normally open, the length of the wires does not matter. To test the module, I put together a small circuit. I powered them from this converter. This multimeter will show the current consumed by the modules, and this one will show the output voltage. At first I wanted to see if the modules actually consume nano and microamps when turned off. But it turned out that my multimeter simply cannot measure such a microscopic current. It was possible to measure the current only in the on state. For this low voltage module it is 1 milliamp. It consumes this current for its work. No output load. Once the shutdown button is pressed, the output voltage slowly begins to drop. This only happens when there is no load. Apparently, this is a discharged capacitor. Then I wanted to see if the current consumption of the module would remain the same. In the disconnected state if a load is connected to it. To do this, I took a resistor and connected it to the output. The input current did not increase. This means that the circuit is completely disabled and the transistor is securely locked. Even in the off state, no current flows to the load. Let's turn the module back on. And I will disconnect the power supply to it. The output voltage naturally disappears. Then I will reconnect the crocodile clip to the wire. The output voltage does not appear until I press the button again. This means that the module does not remember its last state. 
If you disconnect the power from it and connect it again, the module will always be turned off. For the second module, the high voltage one, everything is exactly the same. Only when turned on does it consume not one milliamp, but four. I first took a measurement with a power supply of 5 volts, and then increased the voltage to 12. The current increased by only half a mile ampere. Now I'll try to pass a large current through this module and see how it heats up. I'll start with a voltage of 9 volts. I will load it with an electronic load. The current is more than 5 amperes, and the voltage has dropped a little. The voltage drop did not occur on the module, but on the power supply. To verify this I will connect a multimeter. The input voltage is 8.53 and the output voltage is 8.49. The difference is only 4 millivolts. The board has already warmed up, but not much. The temperature to the touch is approximately 40 degrees Celsius. I'll raise the voltage to 12 volts. I press the button on the module. Turns off and on. The board is still warm. There is no strong heating. I'll raise the tension a little more. At these current and voltage values, everything also works fine. Unfortunately, in this test, due to problems with my equipment, it will not be possible to immediately check the declared characteristics of the module. Therefore, I will check the maximum current and maximum voltage separately. I'll lower the voltage to 12 volts and now you can increase the current. I'll increase the current to almost 8 amperes. The board has already become really hot. But it also works great. I will raise the current even more, to 9.5 amperes. The board is still working and not fried. Although I did not load the board to the 10 amperes declared by the manufacturer, I think it will withstand not only that, but even more current. Of course not in a long-term mode, but not for a long time. The board has already become very hot and is starting to burn your fingers. It heated up very quickly. If it works for a long time with such current, it will definitely need a radiator. Now I will lower the current and increase the voltage. Now the board input is 22 volts. With a current of 1 ampere, the voltage on my power supply drops to 20.5 volts. The board can easily withstand such a small current and is already starting to cool down. In order for this module to be able to control a very powerful load that consumes more than 10 amperes, the output of the module can be loaded with a transistor or relay. In the diagram I showed a simple example using a field effect transistor. Instead of a light bulb, you can put any load that will consume tens of amperes. In this case, all the huge current will flow through the transistor. In reality, this diagram will look like this. There are two halogen lamps as a load. As I said earlier, the current on them will pass through the field effect transistor. In this example, the lamps consume only 6 amperes, but you can connect a more powerful load instead. Do not forget that high current will cause the transistor to become very hot. Therefore, it will need to be placed on a radiator.
If you like these modules, you can buy them by following the link in the description. Well, if you want to do something similar with your own hands, then you can watch a couple of my videos. In them I showed how to make one button and two button electronic switches. Links are also in the description.